Hi, this is The Great Expanse. You may have read the video title and been confused if you know what this channel is about. This is, in fact, not game development. So, I've been binging stuff made here recently, and I think what he does is really cool. So cool, in fact, that I thought, I want to do something like that too. I thought, I could totally do that. Then, after realizing that I, in fact, cannot do what he does, I wasn't deterred and set my sights a little lower. So after thinking about what I could feasibly do, I decided to try and create a launcher that could automatically aim a dart to hit a target. To give myself a target and be realistic here, the goal isn't to create 100% accuracy, it's to make something that at least plays better than me. So we've got a low bar. I think this could be an interesting, fun, and most importantly, simple project. However, a big problem lies in the fact that I don't know how to use any CAD software, I don't know how to 3D print, I don't know how to program microcontrollers, and I don't even know how to wire electronics. I'm sure none of that will be needed, but just in case it is, I'll take you along with me to figure it out. The first thing I did was get a bunch of electronic components. Might have overdone it here. The microcontroller I got to control this thing was the ATI-85, because I wasn't about to drop $30 on a single Arduino that I would probably fry anyway. So I just ordered 5 ATINES, and I'm glad I did, because I later fried one by plugging the 5 volt output pin directly into a servo. Oops. I spent a little bit of time getting the hang of things, learning to program and use the microcontroller, and interfacing with the various sensors and motors. Then I figured I would need to actually design some system that could launch a dart. So you may be asking, how is this going to work? Here's the idea. I'll be holding the device with a dart loaded in it and aiming it at some target, which would be a dartboard. There would have to be some way of visually seeing what I'm aiming at, which I'll probably do with a laser on the front. Then the device will figure out how far away the target is and what angle it's at, and calculate the correct angle to fire the dart to hit the target. Then it'll actually fire the dart and hopefully hit the right spot. Sounds simple. I'm thinking I'm going to use a spring and compression to launch the dart. Then I'll use two solenoids on either side to hold back the spring, and then when the dart is angled to the correct position, the solenoids will pull back, releasing the spring, and thus launching the dart. My expert calculations say that this spring should theoretically be enough to launch the dart pretty far, but I got a few extra just in case. To design the parts for this, I'm going to use SolidWorks. I'm using the educational edition of SolidWorks through my school, because SolidWorks is very expensive. Now, everyone, say it with me. This video is for educational purposes only. So, I lied a little bit. In 10th grade, we used Autodesk Inventor a bit, so I wasn't going in completely blind, but I still wouldn't count it as knowing anything. But after some fun times, I ended up with this model for the actual cannon part. Inside this tube will house the springs to launch the dart, and this goofy part here is to hold the ultrasonic distance sensor to detect how far away the target is. Now the bottom needs to have a cap to hold the springs in, and I was going to make the cannon and the cap have screws to hold them together, but then I thought, man, that's way too complicated. So I just made this interlocking shape that twists on and off. Ideally, this will fit just snug enough so that it won't slip off. If the cap is too big, it's okay because I can just file it down to fit, but I don't want it to be too small. I also made the twisty parts kind of thick because I don't really know how much force the plastic can take because those pieces will be getting the bulk of the force when I press down the spring. Then I added the interface for the arm of the servo. Hopefully, at least one of those screw holes will line up correctly. Then after taking a break for a few days, I realized that the sensor is not supposed to be up there, so I removed it. Next up was the base of the launcher, which will support the cannon. This slot here is to hold the servo, which will move the cannon, and this one here is for the ultrasonic sensor and the laser. The divot there above the sensor is ideally where the top of the cannon will rest when it's all the way down. I forgot that the ultrasonic sensor needs room for the wires sticking at the bottom, so I added this hole to give room for that. I want to cut out as much of this flat plane as I can, but I'm not really sure how strong it needs to be. But I just cut out some part of the platform like this, because I figure some electronics will rest in there. And after some tweaking and putting these parts together, I'm not gonna lie, I think it looks pretty cool. It should fit together nicely once printed. Now I need something to actually print these parts out, and I don't own a 3D printer. However, my college has a 3D printer for people to use. Except I'm not in school right now. Hmm, what to do? I ordered a 3D printer. Me too, 3D printer. Me too. 
I bought the cheapest Ender 3 money could buy, on AliExpress of course, and even though I only bought it a week ago, it's now $30 more expensive. Nice. Now, you're watching me put this together. So, as I said, this is just an Ender 3. It's supposed to have the most support because it's the most common one, but if we're being honest, I just got it because it's the cheapest one I could find. I was kinda surprised at how simple it all came together and how sturdy it was. Luckily I didn't screw it all up, and I only had one problem because I may or may not have plugged some wires into the wrong spot. I didn't do a test print because I was impatient and just started printing the models I needed, and it worked well. I saw a bunch of people online talking about how it takes time and finessing to get it working, but for me it really just worked right out of the box, it had no problems with the print quality, it was great. Just used the default settings in Cura and printed. When I was printing off the Canon part, I severely underestimated the amount of filament it would use and ran out of the test filament halfway through. With like a foot left on the spool, I was frantically googling how to swap filaments out halfway through. Some website recommended fusing the two filaments together, and I was just like, okay. But then my fuse broke two inches before it was about to go in, so I had to re-google how to swap filaments. Apparently, you could just hit pause and press swap filament. And here's how the final print looked. I kinda liked the two colors. Though it looked cool, as some of you may have guessed what happened, this piece snapped off. The part snapped where the two different PLAs were joined, which is probably most of the problem. That was also compounded with the fact that this piece is really long and not connected by much. There was also a lot of problems with the fitting of various pieces. The cap wouldn't fit into the end, but I was able to file it down to fit it in nicely. Kinda. And the solenoid wouldn't fit either, but again, I was able to file it down. Finally, I got the angle of the fins of the dart incorrect, so the grooves rub along the side of the wings and create friction. Before, I wanted the grooves to be the same angle to reduce the amount the wings drag along the side, but now I'm thinking it might be good to keep it like that because it ensures the dart doesn't wobble as much. But anyway though, I realized the dart I was using as a reference is defective, so the angle was completely off. I managed to pick the one dart in my house that had warped fins. I'm still going to keep the angle slightly off from the new design though because I really think the friction holds the dart in place. However, the servo arm fits nice and tight, and the spring fits well into the tube, which means I can at least test launching the dart. And it launches really well, and that's only with one spring too, so if I had two or three, it should launch even further. I would demonstrate three springs launching the dart, but this happened. But honestly, I think that if I make the barrel a little longer, one spring would be enough, because with the cap on right now, the spring's a little compressed, and it should launch even better without my clumsy hands manually releasing it. So I'm definitely going to need to reprint, but this first draft made me more confident. I'm going to just do some tweaking, like making the hole in the center for the dart smaller, and increasing the tolerance of some parts that need to fit together. Also, preferably I don't want to have to swap out filaments mid-print. So, like I said, I made the hole for the dart smaller, made the barrel longer, and changed the angle. I also added some supports at the top and changed how the cap fits on the bottom. And here's the cap after the redesign. I did a little bit more testing, and unfortunately, I realized that this solenoid isn't actually strong enough to pull back when something is pushing on it from the side. So I'm going to need to change how the spring gets released. Okay, this is quite the problem. What I had before was, theoretically, so simple. I really overestimated the strength of the solenoid. I mean, I didn't even think about the high friction on the pin. Okay, we're gonna try using a servo to release the spring instead. According to my calculations, it'll probably, maybe, work. I didn't really want to do this because it's more complicated, but oh well. I want to limit myself to one servo for this because they're pretty big and annoying to mount, and I don't really think I can control three servos at the same time with this board. After some working on it, here we are. This big part jutting out is to mount the servo onto, and these holes are for the pins that the servo will push and pull. I also added another set of supports because I'm genuinely concerned that this will fall apart. Then I made these pins that connect to the servo, which hold the spring back. They may look like they have a weird shape, but they should be just right so that they will pull away from the spring at the same time. So here's the updated launcher assembly. On the bright side, I think it looks even cooler now. And here's the printed cannon. The darts fit nicely in it. There are some cosmetics flaws, but I don't really care. <laughs> And then here are the pins. That small one was a huge pain to get off the build plate. They look pretty good moving in and out, 
I'm using a piece of a paper clip to hold the servo arm and the pins together because I don't have little bolts that small, and paper clips fit pretty snugly into the pins of the servo arm. However, I neglected to realize that this long pin can move like this, which is a problem because then the pins don't move out uniformly. Also, there really isn't a way to ensure the spring is centered in the barrel, so it could be misaligned from the pins, which results in an uneven fire. These two things compounded mean that the spring doesn't release correctly. You can see there that the spring isn't evenly released for a split second. I don't want to have to reprint the whole cannon, so let's see if I can solve this in another way. So, I redesigned the pins and created this plate for the dart to rest on. Ideally, these will be enough. And now it launches. I printed it off the stand and threw this together so I could demonstrate the whole system for you. I loaded it up and look at that. It's pretty solid. That's only with one spring as well. Let's hit a dartboard with this. So I just did this to test its consistency here. It's not terrible, but as you can see, the shots do vary. You do have to account for the fact that I may have moved the cannon around a bit between shots and that I wasn't holding the cannon in place, but that definitely doesn't account for all of it. For now though, I think it's fine. I'm gonna start on the software and electronics to actually make this thing self-aiming, and then if the consistency is still poor, I'll work on it. I have a not very legible list with a bunch of ideas I think will help a lot, but I don't want to reprint the canon before I do the electronics, because there's ultimately gonna be more things that need to be changed and reprinted. But before I work on the electronics, I'm gonna end this video here, because it's longer than I want it. Next time, we'll start on the electronics and ultimately finish the project. As of the release of this video, the project is already fully completed, so the next video should be out in no time at all. A little bit of spoilers, but I think this project turned out pretty well. So, if you're excited to see it finished, stay tuned for the next one. See you next time. Bye bye